Welcome to the summit, Peace Beyond Understanding. And I can now introduce you to Emerson. Welcome, Emerson. Hello, Susan. Thank you for, for inviting me. Yeah, and thank you for being here. And uh, you, uh, you interview people. I've heard you interview many people. And it's, uh, it's both speakers and seekers as well. So it's, it's a whole range of uh, different people with different backgrounds. And, but they all relate to who we are, our reality, the, the truth, the, our true nature. Um, and yeah, we'll be talking about that today. So my, my first question is what, what do you find common for everybody you interview? Like what, what, is, what is it people are seeking for or what is it that the speakers have found? Well, what is that? Uh, the most common thing with, with, with seekers is they're all, always looking for something. And then the speakers are always saying that there's nothing to be found. Okay. <laughs> so so we all, we're looking for something, but there's nothing to be found. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we should just stop seeking. There's no one stopping seeking, right? Because there's no one, uh, no one, no one has a choice to seek or not to seek. It's just what's apparently happening. Yeah. So if we are seeking for, for who we really are, or if we are seeking for something in, in the world, uh, let's say we're seeking for a partner or money or whatever materialism as well, uh, it, it doesn't really matter if it's spirituality, or wh whatever it is we are seeking for, we already have. Or. Seeking just apparently happens, but for no one, right? So no one is seeking. It's just seeking for love, seeking for money. It's just an apparent happening. And um, the difference between a speaker or a seeker, a seeker thinks that it can attain love, it can attain money. It can attain this and that. And there is an identifying seeker. The seeker identifies as a seeker. But when this is seen as for what it is, there is an absence or there was never been a seeker in the first place. It's just what's occurring. It's just what's happening. And, uh, and it's just what is. Yeah. So it's just what is. It's, it's what's happening. But there is no one actually seeking there's no one there's never been anyone yeah it's just an apparent seeking it's just an apparent personality having an experience of seeking a personality having an experience of suffering an experience of wanting to get something wanting to attain something wanting to this and that um so the seeker has personalized the me, right? That I am seeking, it becomes an I am or an I or a me or a character. It doesn't become, it's just, it's just what apparently happens as well. There was nothing in the first place. So um, in the story, there is a seeker that is seeking for liberation. But the funny thing is that what's for, it's what's being sick is already is. Liberation is already, peace is already, unconditional love is already it's already this so there seems to be a confusion or a uh, um um a, a a delusion let's call it a delusion right that i have to get something i have to find some peace i have to find myself i have to find clarity i have to find all the answers i have to find um everything i have to find meaning i have to find purpose I have to do something. And that becomes the identity of, of the, the character. And I have to have a path. I have to have a dharma. I have to do selfless service. I have to do, um, I have to be enlightened. But the thing that is illusory is that I am, that is seeking this. So the one that is, you know, looking for 
enlightenment, looking for liberation, looking to release all of the suffering, is the illusion. So the illusory part of the dream, or not even a part of the dream, is the me. So I am is the dream. I am is the illusion. Yeah. <laughs> it's confusing for the mind, right? It's confusing for the me because they're like, well, you know, but it, it's actually really obvious. It's really clear. And it's quite this. Like this apparent Susan is looking at this apparent Amherst and it's just really looking. But for no one. But no one's here. There's never been anyone here. Yeah. Smiling for no one. <laughs> it is so contradictory because it's being explained in words that are points to dualism. But what's being expressed is actually inexpressible. It's, uh, it can't even be described in words, really. There's an attempt to do it. So what, what's happening here is an attempting to describe something that is not known, something that is unknowable, something that is um, unattainable, something that's not understandable whatsoever. And that's why it seems so confusing, but it's actually really, really simple. It's very direct and it's very um, obvious. It's very stunning that there's no separation and there was never any separation in the beginning. Um, and there was never any, any Susan or Emerson. It's just an idea. It's just a thought. It's just a passing thought. Yeah, a very consistent, consistent passing thought. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> when, 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 when you wake up in the morning, where's, where's that thought? There's a split second there, or maybe a couple of seconds that there's no one. Yeah. Yeah. But then right away, oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Because the, the me is very persistent. It's a very persistent illusion. It tries to it tries to mimic the gaplessness of what is. This is gapless. There's no separation. Even the me appearing as as a me is is gapless. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no gap. I I can see that. There's no gap. Yeah. Yeah. Although in, in life, it all appears so separate and it feels separate. And that's why it's, it's yeah, you cannot understand that in reality, it is not so. <laughs> and it feels like there is this me. There is that sense of me too. But maybe that's just a habit we've grown up with, is it? It's like an addiction, right? You know, an addiction that, that to me is like an addiction that's so persistent that it's always quite there. And then it convinces itself that it's always been there. It has a history. It has a future. It has, it, it exists in time and space, although time and space are illusory. It has ideas. It, it makes it into this experience of, of um, a character that seems to live from, you know, from... Uh, born to death and yeah. it seems to have this this kind of like non-stop really kind of like almost like a um a, a very persistent um illusion but when it's seen by no one even for a split second it cannot be unseen that there's never been anyone in the first place so people talk about glimpses or um when it's seen as this it's seen that it, it's almost like a um a revelation, but for no one. It's almost like an unknowing, an unraveling, a um, a subtraction. Kind of like when you dreamt that that a uh, you know your your pet died or your friend died, and you're you and you wake up and you're like, oh, that was just a dream. Yeah. And then for and then that's completely forgotten. That whole dream is forgotten. Does that make any sense? So, so the, the me is, is kind of like, you know, when there's an apparent dropping away, no, nothing drops away, by the way, because it was never there in the first place. Kind of like the death of, of a, a pet or a, a friend that was never there in the first place because it was just a dream. So it's seen as like, 
oh, wow. So in, in, the, in the apparent beginning, there's no beginning. This is just a story as well. It's kind of like, wow. There was no Emerson. There's never been an Emerson. It's just an idea. And then there's a, a, an apparent settling of this, this, this kind of like uh, recognition by no one. Like, okay, this is, this is how, oh, wow, this is unknowable. So there's an unraveling or a disintegration of ideas about this character. So there's almost like an instant forgiveness. It's pure and innocent because there's no one there. But it's not a bypassing, you see. Some people think when, 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 when someone talks about this, about, you know, um, about no one there, oh, I'm not here, or I've never been here, it seems like a, um, a denial or a, a spiritual bypassing or a, an, just a negation or, or, or the denial of, of, the, of the character, but actually it's the complete opposite. It seems like the filter is off. There's no more me trying to say that this is good or this is bad, this is, this is wrong or this is right. It's just seen as everything full and completely, like a full on, like a, uh, a collision. It's unavoidable. You're like, oh, wow. It's always been this way. Although that's just a statement in the story too. But it's almost like, it's almost like, wow. It's like when you wake up from a dream, someone died. This is probably a bad analogy. <laughs> and then you're like, Oh, wow, my, my pet is still here. There's a relief. Huh. Yeah. So yeah. there's a relief that there's no, no, no Emerson has ever been there. Huh. But, but this apparent happening is experienced by no one. No one is experiencing it. But it's, 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 it's a full-on um, crash. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, oh, wow. So... So, for example, when I'm watching TV and I, I'll see like a pet and a and a and then uh, an owner reunite, I'm crying my eyes out. When there's a funny thing, a comedy, I'm laughing at the top of my head. When there is kindness happening, kindness is full on. When someone is really sad, I'll hug that person fully, because there's no more filtering. There's no one there that should say, "Should I hug or should I not?" Is this wrong or this is right? It's just what's happening. So there seems to be an, 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 an absence of um, a character that is manipulating, controlling things, a character that is trying to have an agenda. It's just a full on expression of nothing. And that is really confusing as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it sounds, it sounds very alive and it's aliveness yeah yeah and it's also full-on it's it's undescribable even saying these words does not really cover it right even saying all of this description um can be described a little bit but it doesn't come close yeah to what's being expressed yeah and it, it's like it also sounds very peaceful because you can just be who you are without that filter. It just, it's like a, there's a naturalness about it. Yeah, there's peace that passes all understanding. So whatever arises, right? It could be, it could be quick, um, you know, for example, when someone steps on your toe, it's kind of like an ouch. But there's peace, you know, or, or I, I've told this story many, many times. I caught my two fingers in a garage door. And the thought was really, really painful. Have you ever caught your fingers in a door? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I um, caught these fingers on, on a garage door. And then the thought came that I might lose my two fingers. Sat down. And then there was this, this endorphins happening, this pain that was just kind of like happening but the pain was happening for no one it was intense pain but there was no one saying that i am this pain i am this suffering i am this that 
I am. You know, there's no more I am this. It's just seen as an illusory. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I can see you, you are with what happens, but there's no person in everything. So it's, it's, uh, there's, there's not that grasping onto it or attachment or, yeah, it's, it seems more free. Like it if, is. Uh, it's freedom for no one. Yeah. It's liberation, but for no one. Because when, when someone has a liberation, it becomes a concept. It becomes an idea. When someone has freedom, it becomes my kind of freedom. When it becomes um, someone's unconditional love, it becomes their own unconditional love. Even though it says unconditional, it becomes conditioned by that character trying to have its own definition of what freedom is, what love is, what peace is, what um, suffering is. So there's no one that is experiencing anything, but there is a full-on collision of whatever is happening. There's it's not escaping anything. It's not avoiding it. It's, it's full-on. It's, I can't even express it fully. I seem to run out of words. It's, it's, it's this. Even the moment that you say this, this is already gone. It can't be captured. It, there's, it's positionless. It's locationless. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's impossible to, to dis describe this. There's a lot of great speakers that are able to hint at this. So what's happening here is just hinting, but there are great, great speakers out there that are, are quite great at, but it's really simple because it's really obvious. The me tends to complicate it. The me tries to put descriptions, definitions, puts um, attainment, maybe techniques on how to get here. Well, how did you get here? How do you attain this? How do you hold air? How do you catch air? <laughs> it's yeah. just what is. How do you explain wetness, water? It's just this. Yeah. yeah. And we do want that technique or how do we get there? How, but it, it's not possible like that. What, so it's, it, it, it can't you, be possible because it's already this. How do you get here when it's already here? Although there's no here and there's no this, it's how do you attain this when it's already? Uh, in the story of this character, it thought for about 10 years of trying to attain this because it had a, uh, an apparent awakening, a glimpse really, it was just an experience of somebody thought that it could share and how to get this. But of course that fails because the one that claims it is not really there. It becomes a facade, it becomes uh, an idea, it becomes something that, that is a position, something that is a, um, um, a teaching. When it becomes a teaching, I will teach you, Susan, from how to get here to here by doing this and this. Although there's nothing wrong with that, it's just what's happening too. It's beautiful. But how can you teach something that cannot be thought because it's already is? Yeah. How can you how can you teach an illusion to do more illusions? Do more illusory things. So it's kind of like telling um, um, a fictional character to um, do this and that. It's just a story. Nothing wrong with that, but it's just a story. Yeah. And everything that happens is just a story, right? Yeah. Including this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a happening and, and we can describe the happening. We can have all kinds of ideas about it and all kind of experiences, but it's all a story of me, you could say. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, until it's seen by no one again, that is just a story of me. Then this apparent um, is just a flowing, inescapable, full on life, lifing itself. Yeah, life. Yeah. In itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For no one. For no one. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I say, okay, no one. Of course, I'm like, who is that no one, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. The no, the, the no one or the me or the character or the I um, can also, you know, the I, the story of the I or the me or the no one, you know, is, is, is the story of Susan, is the dream. Mm -hmm. In the story of Susan, perhaps there is some seeking happening. There is some suffering happening. And it's a story. And so the, the, the Susan, the, the, the character Susan wants to find um, peace that passes understanding, wants to understand unconditional love, but it already is. Everything is unconditional love. Yeah. It's always peace that passes all understanding. It's always peace. There's nothing other than peace. You can say unconditional peace or peace that's never sh shaken unwavering peacefulness because in that peace everything is allowed including apparent chaos <laughs> apparent um traffic apparent this but there's always peace it's nothing um appearing as everything it's empty fullness yeah it's utter chaos amidst the peace that passes all understanding yeah, and I, I think also if we're really honest with ourselves, there is something in us where there is this peace somewhere. No matter in what situation we are in, there's always something in us that is somehow peaceful. There's, there's some love there. or there, There's something there in us that just seems to always be in peace, I think. In the, uh, this, this is not a technique or anything, but in the subtraction of the me, it's always been peace. The me tries to decide whether this is peacefulness or this is not peaceful. If this is love or this is not love. It appears in, it, it works in dualism, right? So in the subtraction of the character or the me, there's nothing to subtract because it's never really been there. Right, but it's just I'm just trying to kind of like you know try to to um, to explain that it's always been peace. So the me thinks it's the keeper of peace. The me thinks that it can elevate. It can you know there's this idea that the me can um, the me is a self. There's a small me and it becomes a higher me, a higher self. But it's just a dream as well. So the higher self thinks that. Um, well, I am the consciousness now. I am the um, um, I'm the absolute. I am all awareness now. But that's just an experience. So the me has just become, you know, an elevated kind of like now I'm going to be a better me. Now I'm going to be a higher self. But it's still the same thing. I have studied. I've, I've studied so many books. I, I used to teach Eastern philosophy as a, as a spiritual teacher, and I really believe that. So the belief in the higher self or the, or the um, transcendence of the me is thinking that you are spirit, you are soul, you are God. And thinking that, that, you know, that this, this, this me, this small me can attain um, spirithood or become a soul. So if you take all of those ideas away, if you take all of that ideas away, and it, 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 because you have to attain this and that, I have to purify, I have to do meditation, I have to do all of this. When what's being talked about here is already here. It's already present. So there's no, no A to B, nothing to attain, nothing to become, not, not, not a higher, there's no levels. There's no steps. <laughs> there's no. There's no techniques. There's no workshops. There's no programs. 
um, because it's really just simply stunning and it's right this apparent moment appearing as this so in the uh, so so when when I when I was kind of like seeking big time all I, I tried to do was like a, let me get to my higher self let me tap into my higher self let me go do my mantras let me do um you know let me do some selfless service I'll only um I'll I'll I'll, I'll serve others you know because I really really want to attain I really want to maintain this apparent enlightenment this apparent you know you know peacefulness but that enlightenment, that liberation depended on me, you know, trying to maintain it, trying to, trying to be pure, trying to be good, trying to be this and that. When in, in reality, there's no good or bad. It's a made up thing. There's no right or wrong. It's just what's happening. And that's that's quite hard for us, a lot of people to take because they they you know they stand in morality. There has to be some morality, but morality is already a construct. It's already it's also created. It's also an idea that was created. Um, if you look at the animal kingdom, are you going to um, are you going to put one animal good or bad because of their actions? It's just what's happening. It's natural. I'm not saying that all of a sudden, you know, when, when there is, you know, when there's a realization there's no good or bad, that people are going to start carrying a gun and shooting everyone. If the character is apparently does, does not have, you know, for example, I would not be able to, to shoot a gun at anyone because that's the way that the apparent character is. There are characters there that have no problem, you know, shooting a gun at someone. There's no choice. There's no free will. And in that no free will, no one, um, nothing happening is peacefulness. Because there's no one trying to attain something. There's nothing happening. Everything is just happening as it is. There's no observer. There's no one aware. There's no awareness being aware of awareness of awareness and aware. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that seems dualistic. That seems kind of like a, um, when this is seen by no one, it's everything is just seen as no separation, no awareness. There's no consciousness, there's no spirit, there's no soul, there's no higher self. There is no um, want to get to anywhere. There's no past lives. There's no reincarnation. There is no liberation. There is no suffering. It's just seen as what's happening. Again, it's not a denial. For example, if, if, um, for example, if someone, for example, if I was biking and I crashed, of course, that's still going to happen. It doesn't mean that, that you know, that there's no one here. Oh, no, this, this, there's a better example. If there's a fire happening in this house, this character We'll get out of the house. It's not going to say that, well, there's nothing happening and there's no one really here. It's still going to get out of the house. And, uh, or for example, if it's eating some food, um, you know, there's, there's some food it's eating. Um, it's not going to say that there's nothing here. It has still apparent preferences. Like, you know, I like spicy food. I like sweets. I don't like salty too much. It's just what's happening now. Yeah. Yeah, and as you explain it, it also sounds, yeah, it makes sense even what you're saying. <laughs> Although all the, the happenings that are so, uh, like shooting someone or, you know, that just that does not seem okay no matter what. I don't care if there's no one or not. That's just not okay, you know. And that's okay too. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be condoned. You know what I'm saying? I'm not condoning it, you know what I'm saying? But it's just seen as it is. Yeah. Anger and might anger anger might still arise, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't really last long, right? Because it's seen as an illusion. Frustration might still happen. Judgment might still happen. 
And like, for example, if I read a news about someone kind of like, uh, you know, that murdered something, I'm like, oh, wow, that's horrible. It's not going to say, oh, it's nothing happening. But it's just seen as a story. Yeah. It's just seen as illusory. So there's no, there's no stickiness. There's no holding on to that story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because what, what is going on, and it, I mean, th this does exist, this is, but it's just not as we think it is. It, it's not like me and the world, but it's just world happening or life happening. That's, that's, right. that's yeah. the only difference. Um, yeah. Because it's not like this is not real. No, no, this, this is real uh, for now, at least. It's real and unreal. Yeah, it's real and not real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard you uh, explain unconditional love. And I was just like, ah, oh, I, I really like it. Can, can you? I don't know if I can repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there seems to be a misconception about unconditional love. You know, the unconditional love is, is, is mistaken as compassion, is mistaken as a mother's love for her children. It's, 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 uh, it's mistaken as something that, that is attainable, something that I, you know, if, if I have unconditional love, you know, then, but it's really, really misunderstood because unconditional love actually allows everything, including murder, including shooting, including all of that. And it's misperceived as something that is a compassionate, you know, act or something. It's it's even individualized. It's individualized. So, for example, I can say that you know I I love unconditionally and all of this kind of stuff, but that's actually not even true, because for unconditional love to be completely kind of like um, explored or expressed, it actually is an allowance, like a radical acceptance of everything by no one, no. no one's accepting it. So whatever is occurring, whatever is happening. So there's this tendency for people thinking that there is a, um, a spirit or a soul or a higher self going back to the con conversation and that spirit or soul is unconditional love. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. It's just an idea as well. Unconditional love cannot really be put into an idea because it's unconditional. How can a conditioned mind try to understand something that's unconditional? How can a condition uh, me or a seeker or even a teacher try to explain something that is completely unexplainable? So what I'm even expressing here is just another, you know, it's just another idea, but it's coming from no one. It's, it's an expression of, for example, um, I used to, when I was a teacher, I used to teach unconditional love. So I thought unconditional love was walking to a, you know, to a street where there's a lot of suffering and not judging people and, and giving, giving away food or, or teaching them meditation or something. And, and, and I was trying to be a saint, trying to be, you know, trying to, not even trying, um, that's what, that's what was it was beginning to it was almost like a messiah complex right because if you look at you know like the ideas the, the, probably a lot of people would would put jesus or buddha as, as examples of unconditional love or or mother teresa or i don't i don't know so so for a, a seeker to attain that um they, they're following those actions so i'm like maybe i'll give away everything i'll be really kind and everything but there's also a dark side of that. You know, there's some people, you know, some people go drinking and partying and all that kind of stuff. That's also unconditional love. So everything is unconditional love, including this conversation is unconditional love. You yes. can just say, you can see that everything is unconditional love. And it's, and it's beautiful and dark and mysterious and unknowable. But it's not something that can be attained by conditioned illusion. So the illusion is the me trying to attain something that is impossible. 
again, there's this this God complex in me, right? Or an awareness that I'm I'm the uh, I'm the totality, or I am the source, or I am the um, I am the consciousness. I am everything. I am everything, and so it becomes into like a spirit or God or a spirit complex, thinking that they are now unconditional love. But even even that I am this awareness or I am consciousness is conditioned because the one that's saying that is having that experience. It's just an experience. I, I've had all sorts of experiences. I've had like an opening of the heart, you know, when it was Kundalini apparently, but that's all just illusory as well. There was sometimes that I would just hug everybody on the street. There's just this blissfulness maybe about 10 years ago. And there was a time that I just kind of like, but that's just seen as an experience. It's beautiful, but that's not unconditional love. There's just a character having an experience that mimics unconditional love. Because unconditional love would, would, would you know, it's impossible even to, to fathom that idea. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's like... Uh, um, yeah, I, I can't. It, it's I can't even go there. You know what I'm saying? It's it's unteachable. Yeah. It's unteachable because it's already what is. This appearance right now, Susan and Emerson. Apparently, Susan and Emerson speaking as unconditional love. And it's mysterious. It's unknowable. It's beautiful. It could also be dark and scary. Yeah. And yeah. It's unknowable. That that's a, that's why the understanding of it is not possible, <laughs> because it will always it, it, it's not graspable. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. It's uh, well, I don't know anything really. It's just I'm just gonna like it's just a speaking happening and and uh, an apparent speaking happening for, for I I don't I can't even explain it, but I've had those experiences. You know, people would 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 um would say about um, enlightenment. So I had that enlightenment experience about 15, 10 years ago. I don't, I don't even know, but that was just a dream as well. There was a time that I just sat in silence and there was a time that people, I just, it was, it was just an experience because that was the character Emerson experiencing liberation, but that was not sustainable because it has taken unconditional love into its own definition and its own technique and its own ways and narrative that becomes a conditional, unconditional love. So I've just made something unconditional, conditional, because now it's my teaching. So in this one, now I'm the source or I'm tapping into the source. There's no source, it's sourceless. It's locationless. It's, um, there's no authority, but there seems to be an undeniability of what's being spoke, uh, spoken about <laughs> because it's, it's this, this is unconditional love. Everything is unconditional love, including the dark thoughts, the really, really dark thoughts, the beautiful, blissful experiences to those dark despair, almost suicidal thoughts it's all unconditional love everything is allowed everything is being expressed isn't that beautiful and dark at the same time <laughs> yeah yeah but it it's the whole it allows for everything and and that that's why we don't have to judge ourselves all the time it just it comes and goes and it's not like we have to take action on every thought we have, of course, right? It's, it's just we have no choice anyway. <laughs> There's no choice anyway, right? Right. It's there is no one there really making a choice. Yeah. It's just happening and yeah. yeah, yeah. I've had I've had some um, some ex students um, doing some zooms before that found me again and and I, and and uh, because I failed I, I failed as a spiritual teacher, but they found me again. So they had this discussion about. Um, free will so um it's really mind-blowing you know because 
for that there's no free will, but it's just what's happening. It's actually been scientifically proven. For example, if Susan was hooked up to a to a test thing right now that they did, um, the machine or the computer would guess if Susan is going to pick coffee or tea or pie or ice cream seven seconds before. It's also going to be able to guess what Susan's going to say when asked a question. So is there really anyone there? There's no ghost inside the machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yet it's not like- It's just a machine. machine. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, we are living beings. You know, it's not like we're just these robots, right? Well, well um, are we? <laughs> but it's, it's it's alive like a, a robot. there's an aliveness that, yeah. that is unexplainable you can say meet robots but no creator it's just appearing as this and it's beautiful yeah it's not it's not it's not a denial again right mm -hmm. i really don't know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying you can see beings and that's allowed too and that's completely all right um but there's just an aliveness there is a an excitedness about nothing of not knowing of not knowing what's next of hopelessness there's kind of like a an ex exuberant i don't know anything it's hopeless it's meaningless it's purposeless and that's fine that's where the peace that passes all understanding yeah by no one kind of like having this because when there's someone there, it tries to look for meaning. It tries to look for a purpose. It tries to look for a source of all of this. It tries to find answers of something that cannot be really answered. It tries to find a position so that it can come from a place. It comes to come from a, a knowing. So this is, you know, it's, it's a knowing. But this is actually a knowing. Because everything that's ever been known, everything that's ever been perceived, everything that's ever been talked about is coming from a, from a me, from an illusory. So it's like a dream talking about a dream. Yeah. About a dream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it is, yeah, it's, it's, peaceful to just live life as is this wonder you could say too yeah, yeah wonder, it's just and, yeah this it's a knowable wonder right wow yeah. wow yeah, yeah it's a knowable wow yeah. it's an attainable great it's hopeless yes it's utterly completely meaningless that's amazing not for the me, you know, saying the me would say, well, what do you mean? There's no meaning and purpose to all of this. And what do you mean? It, it's, it's completely hopeless. What do you mean? It's like, there must be, you know, there must be some hope and everything like that. It's kind of like the, 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 uh, the me, when, when, when this character was seeking, it just kept on banging to a wall over and over again. I'm like, is there meaning in, in hitting this wall over and over again? Because it could not find any answer. It could not find any peace. It could not find any unconditional love. Or when it thinks it found unconditional love, it holds it and, and molds it into something that's personal. And then when, when, when a crisis happens, like, you know, um, someone dies, it doesn't know how to handle it. It doesn't know how to grieve because it's thinking that it, I have to be peaceful and blissful all the, all the time. So when my aunt passed away um, a few months ago, hmm. there was crying and sobbing until there was you know there was just the eyes were stinging liquids were coming out of the eyes sobbing was happening when one of my best friends passed away there was this enormous um grieving crying but for no one sometimes they could not get out of bed because of the grief so it's not by passing it's just, it's just not an identification. It's not like, oh, poor me, I've lost this. It's just, it's just what's happening. Prior to this apparent um, 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 unhappening, 
when someone died, I used to just numb myself and pretend everything was okay. I'll say something like, well, maybe they have passed on to a different, you know, they have, they have released all their suffering now. It comes from a place of knowing. It comes from a place of understanding. It comes from a place of um, holding on to ideas of what unconditional love is and then applying it even though it did not really understand it. So unconditional love is an acceptance of even all the ugliness, even all of that darkness and brutality, anything that can be thought of, anything that can be perceived from the full spectrum of good to bad or ugly is radically accepted, but for no one. There seems to be um, um, uh, a lot of people talking about unconditional love. And it's, it's quite funny because it's something that is so hard to talk about. I, I have to admit that this is just hinting at it, but it cannot really fully describe it. And even talking about peace is the same thing. You know, when, when they say peace that passes all understanding. So when you're trying to explain peace, some, you know, some teachers would come to a location or to an idea or to a statement about peace when it's completely un not understandable. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But peace is always here and it never left. It never, it has no beginning or no end. It doesn't have um, levels. Mm -hmm. It can't be attained because it already is. It can't be lost because it's already. It never was lost. It can't be found. It's already here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, Amazon, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, uh, yeah. I can just say, wow. <laughs> 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 and uh, a website so people can get in touch with you uh, there is a website right now um, uh, just uh, it's called none-duality.live so non-duality.live but with the hyphen in between none and duality yeah non-duality yeah dot live yeah yeah great and uh, yeah uh, I must say I'm uh, thank you so much for for being here and for everything you said and it uh, is just beautiful and yeah I appreciate it thank you Susan thank you thank you